Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this another episode of uh, Juno Masterclass, which is a part of the learning series that we have at Juno. We conduct it every Saturday from six to seven p.m. Uh, just to set in some context for our first-time joiners and listeners, uh, we at Juno believe that sales is something that is uh, so often used in our daily lives, and the irony is such that it is not taught in a structured format or a course per se in our b schools colleges universities so much so that uh, a lot of us end up taking courses in management that could be in finance operations uh, and a large chunk of it and a large chunk of it uh, get into sales and sometimes they are caught unaware right and this is where juno steps in and we have a kind of a structured training a uh, format for you guys wherein we have a lot of interactive sessions live activities uh, assignments uh, talks from industry leaders and that is how young professionals and business owners are able to use these tips and tricks to scale up either their businesses or their role wherever they are working right in life uh, so without wasting much time uh, i would like to give a very warm welcome to sunny uh just to give you a brief intro about sunny i'm sure he will be able to extrapolate from there once he steps in uh sunny heads the sales team at ripple hire right now and prior to this he has been working with companies like adp im jobs uh he holds an mba degree from wellinger and uh, today he is going to help us understand how relationship building or storytelling can probably help you in your daily lives and corporate career right so over to you sunny i'll just present my screen thank you thank you sanjay it's good to connect rather it's good to reconnect with uh, some of the old folks back from my time at i am jobs and it's and it's good to connect with all of you who are now part of the juno vision as well now uh, fairly interesting what the org is doing in terms of uh, you know driving the cause of sales and helping the larger ecosystem understand that sales is a science in itself and uh, it is something that of course uh, you know needs to be taught in a fashion that makes it much more productive for the world at large also okay up uh, today what i'm largely going to cover i i really don't like discussing with a ppt but since it is the norm uh, with these master classes i thought i will pull one out um you know fairly cliched in terms of starting of course with a with a quote but uh, largely something that uh, all of us live by at least i have lived by in my uh, in my lifetime as a sales professional and of what i have understood and captured from this is that it essentially helps a lot okay uh, i am going to start with a quick introduction about what i do what i have been doing so far uh some of it fairly pompous uh, but the underlying idea is to uh, for all of you prospects to understand uh, uh, you know whether a career in sales makes sense and i'm sure you've joined this community joined this fraternity because you want to pursue one uh, what is different that we can do beyond the realm of transactional sales in terms of leveraging a relationship building skills uh, a little bit of storytelling that's something that get you know, drive you towards success so uh, not going to reiterate the quote zig zagler is is a fairly uh, pronounced thought leader and uh, you should check him up you should read him up one of the other quotes that i always associate with sales is what cannot be cured must be endured now that's it's actually a life quote uh, not just uh, you know a sales quote but it really helps you uh helps you focus on funnel building uh, because uh, you know you always have to have the top of the funnel heavy there are always going to be set of customers who are who are not going to be cured by virtue of no matter how good a sales guy or sales person is so with that being said uh, i'd like to move to uh, you know sanjay if i can request you to move to uh, the next slide after this and of course i'll talk to slide number 2 also definitely uh yeah thank you palak i'll i'll request so we i i'd love to take more questions i'd love to take questions as we move along in the presentation also 
uh, you know, like Palak is suggesting, you can raise your hand or we can keep this towards the end as well. I'll leave the choice to the moderators. But largely, just to introduce myself, like Sanjay mentioned, I am now part of this organization called Ripple Hire. We are an enterprise software solution that largely caters to uh, the recruiting ecosystem. In simple terms, uh, the software that I sell is called an application tracking system, but this is only for the enterprise ecosystem. So with a minimum of $250,000 and above, that's largely what our uh, annual ARR stands at with regards to every, every company or every deal that we usually work with. Uh, so I am a sales guy. I'm a sales guy who's as good as his network. Uh, so much so that you know the good folks at IM Jobs thought of me and you know brought me back here when when there is a newer uh, you know initiative now. So it is you know in more ways than one an extension of the relationships that you build over a period of time uh, that helps you get different opportunities to share and learn as well. Uh, to my credit, this is something that I'm really proud of. I am not proud of point number four and uh, point number four, but I'm definitely point uh, proud of point number three which is to my credit, 3,500 odd in-person meetings over the last uh, six to seven years of me working actively as a sales professional. Uh, it is important. It is important to have that in-person connect. And especially in the times when, uh, you know, and I'm not an archaic sales guy, but in the times that I, I started, uh, that was the norm. Of course, COVID and the pandemic definitely changed the game in terms of how products are sold, how enterprise level conversations are conducted. And in the in the examples that I will share here onwards, I'd also want to give you a sense of how you can marry the two in-person relationships as well as virtual relationships and drive success for yourself. But what has been key as an outcome of this has been I have maintained countless relationships by virtue of being in touch with my customers. Customers are now more so friends, more so mentors. You reach out to them for any kind of impediment or any kind of roadblock that you might personally feel in your career. Because of course, when you're interacting in an enterprise ecosystem, you're interacting with fairly senior professionals also. Okay. Uh, to my credit, in terms of revenue that I've managed to drive over the past seven to eight years, has been roughly about $4 million. So that's roughly about 30 crores worth of business, 33 crores worth of business that I've managed to drive over the years. Uh, the outcome has been that uh, beyond, uh, beyond the fixed, I've managed to drive roughly about 20 to 22 lakhs worth of uh, revenue for myself as variable revenue. That just calls out to the effectiveness of someone who's wanting to get started in sales and be part of the enterprise sales ecosystem. This is not something that I want to be pompous about, but this is again to give everybody a flavor that, you know, most of us here are uh, are uh, are the voice for the sales ecosystem, are representatives of the sales ecosystem. And it has a lot of uh, connotations to the outside world. You know, because sales is largely considered to be from the B2C aspect. But there is a whole wide world out there wherein there are B2B solutions that are being sold and sales professionals drive a lot of revenue out of uh, the same for themselves as well as for their organizations as well. Okay. So with this being said and the introduction out of the way, I want to focus, I, I don't want it to be fairly verbose. I'm going to be sharing examples as we move along. But just want to give you a quick introduction in terms of what does relationship building and relationship building. Yes, thank you, Sanjay. To start with, uh, you know, it's it's a fairly commonly used term, relationship, and uh, it has different connotations. But when you associate it with sales or when you associate it with uh, your work life, we are largely focusing on a set of activities. Over my years of working, one of the things that I have learned is if you are able to compartmentalize your efforts, uh, be it sales, be it operations, be it finance, whatever, if you are able to 
draw up a list and set off sort of compartmentalize your efforts. I was saying sales essentially, your relationship building essentially is is nothing but a set of activities as I see it. You know, it's a set of mechanized steps if you are able to make it part of uh, make it part of your daily realm of things, you are largely in more ways than one building in a repeatable scalable engine. If you rinse and repeat the actions and activities with every uh, every deal or every conversation that you initiate in your world, it becomes repetitive enough for you to uh, in more ways than one become a champion on it. Okay, And for it to be effective, I believe relationship selling is largely dictated by a strategy. Again, an extension of what I just mentioned in terms of uh, where do I see this headed. Okay. I also want to take this opportunity before we you know, pick up on the core elements and we can move to slide number four, uh, Sanjay, simultaneously. To, uh, to let for one, the always be closing thought process be left aside. Okay, we have seen a lot of movies which which focus on uh, which focus on the very aggressive method of selling, and that works. It works differently for different organizations, and uh, we can always continue to defend the thought process that uh, you know the deals have to flow in through the bottom of the funnel in a very aggressive fashion, but relationship building is slow in nature relationship building uh, follows a certain path which is much more calmer than the aggressive aspect and uh, like they say if you spend more time uh, practicing you have to spend less time uh, actually out there on the field when you are delivering okay so relationship building in more ways than one is a practice Sanjay, can i request you to move to the fourth slide so we can actually focus on defining what relationship building is all about. And now I'm going to speak specifically in terms of context to your conversations with your customers, specifically maybe using some examples also. Uh, I'll give you my uh, very simple example to start with. When I started my career, I was responsible for uh, selling a job portal. I was responsible for selling job postings, but I was fortunate enough to be one of the first few uh, in my organization to be representing a certain region and a certain territory and the world was an oyster okay uh, with that very opportunity i was reaching out to fairly senior uh, head hrs head of talent acquisition folks out in the fraternity in the western region of india especially in bombay and uh, it gave me the opportunity to reach out to because bombay largely is a is a hotbed for financial services institutions banks and bfcs etc it it gave me the opportunity to reach out to fairly senior folks there and i remember one very specific conversation and one very specific meeting that i had with uh, you know hdfc bank you know one of our, the largest private sector bank in the country and a very senior guy there told me i was all of 24 and what i was told is uh, you know, your organization has enabled you to come represent them here and meet me. Uh, someone in my organization, perhaps at your age and stage in life, will take about seven to eight years uh, to get to my cape in also. And that's the kind of differentiation, you know, a sales role and a B2B role can give you. And why was that? That was only because I could muster up and gather up the courage to go and have that conversation with that senior gentleman also. So one of the first things that I want to reiterate and reiterate with strong volition is that treat your prospects as humans. Do not treat them as demigods. Irrespective of the product that you are selling, irrespective of the organization that you are representing and irrespective of whoever it is on the other side of the phone, of course, you have to be polite. Of course, you have to be docile. You have to have a certain uh, polished, nuanced communication skill. But the person on the other end of the phone is not a scary individual. Please treat them as someone who are equal to you because that's what leaders want. Leaders also do not want to be treated as demigods because that's when the conversations start 
And if you treat them as one, they are going to treat you back with the same authority. Okay. So one of the first things and one of the first key things that you need to understand about relationship building, if you want to be successful in sales is, uh, you have to treat the other person as your equal, give them respect. But if you start getting intimidated by the person across the table, who's going to spend his money or spend his organization's money and buy your product or buy your service, uh, things start going southwards and downwards from there. Okay. So treat them as human, treat them like you would have a conversation, like you would have a conversation, of course, with someone who's close to you, perhaps with your family as well, but just in a much more nuanced and polished fashion. That's that's the first thing that I would uh, propose or recommend. Okay. Point number two, when you are having uh, conversations, first impression is the last impression, and I live by this fact, uh, try to make it quality the first time itself. Okay. And this, you have to work backwards to uh, work backwards towards your research, work backwards towards uh, everything that you know about your prospect, work backwards towards uh, everything that's out there available on the internet for you to uh, equip yourself with before you have your first conversation as well. Okay. Uh, I remember back in the good old days when, when we would be out there, out on the field, meeting multiple customers. Uh, evenings were rather spent for preparing for the meetings for the day after or you know for the rest of the week and a simple LinkedIn search not just researching about the company but researching about the person uh, really helps and I, I in a very interesting uh, uh, memory comes to my mind uh, it was my very second meeting and I can perhaps point out to the date also maybe 20th 21st August 2015. It was about three weeks after I had joined IM Jobs. Uh, I had reached out to this co-founder of an organization. They were fairly small then. Now they are north of a thousand crores in terms of business. And uh, the only thing that uh, you know stood by me was this uh, was the university or the pedigree that this gentleman belonged to. Okay. Uh, and when I went and met him, I was fortunate enough. He did give me a meeting. We spent 30 minutes understanding what I was there and what I was proposing to sell. Uh, but then towards the end of the meeting, when we were just wrapping up, I, I happened to simply extend uh, a one-liner asking, you know, how was it to study at Cornell? Okay, because I do hear that it, it comes from, uh, you know, it's a very reputed pedigree. It's a very reputed institute. And... I'm sure from you know being a Cornell graduate to now starting up your own firm, uh, it must have been a very different journey altogether. And then the 30 minutes extended to another hour or so. And uh, you know it just led to that person being felt special enough that someone who's actually come in for uh, a very specific reason has now cared enough to ask me about my own personal experiences also. And that very day, and uh, this is this is not made up. That very day is when uh, we managed to close the deal with them, and it's largely also again because of the fact that uh, we were able to uh, have that kind of conversation. So speak quality, speak quality right the very first time. And make sure that that conversation actually has some kind of strong recollection. Taking forward the example, uh, the one that I just quoted, another example that comes to mind, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are B-School graduates and this is something that is part of all our case studies. Uh, the Starbucks example. Something that's much more personalized, has a very strong recollection. So when you walk up to Starbucks, you are sure that the coffee is going to, of course, taste great. But your name being written on the star, you know, on the coffee mug, uh, drives for a much more personalized experience, and that's a very small nuance. Uh, it's a nuance that if you take away with you, and if you build a strong recollect around it, uh, I'm sure it's going to help you in a, in your sales sales efforts towards building a much more stronger relationship. Third point here, as you see it, is when, when your customers remember you. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I'm pausing because I'm reading uh, Vipona's question. Could, could you specify this uh, precisely coaching industry? Vipona? Yeah, so, uh, so coaching industry or the counseling industry, you know, life coaching or uh, student coaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, so could you please clarify that uh, how should be the relationship be like in coaching industry or how, how should I, because it's a service providing industry. It's for people mental health, for their emotional health uh, sure. to, uh, yeah, to perform more productive in a certain way. So how to build that specific uh, customer or client relationship? Uh, good question. And uh, this is a first for me as well. So I'll try to attempt to answer this because I've not been exposed as much to the coaching uh, industry uh, per se, but I, I strongly believe that there are very, uh, very key parallels that you can draw between B2B and B2C. Coaching industry is much more personalized, is much more B2C in nature. But I think if you are able to manage mm -hmm. approaches in a repeatable, mm -hmm. scalable Hello? manner, because so, uh, may I, sir, please interrupt? Yeah. Sure, sure, go ahead. So, because so people are more. Go ahead. Yeah, so people are more more vulnerable in certain way, you know, uh, when it comes to their emotional health and mental health. Sure. And uh, we are providing certain services here. So, how to build that trust? How to build that relationship? So that people can trust. I'll give you a, a quick cheat code that helps uh, perhaps rather all industries. And you can tell me if that works for the industry uh, that you care about. Yes, sir. See, Thank you. People are largely always looking for, uh, for a community which has similar experiences. You know, when you're working in a in a coaching setup or when you are actually out there looking for coaching, yeah, the class. only way you can be coached is when you have a extended <laughs> the only way you can coach uh, better is when you have an extended community of people who have had similar experiences. So how do you help uh, build uh, trust amongst people or how do you manage to do that is by collating a set of step number one collate a set of experiences that most of your customers or prospects are coming through by okay basis this so this is gathering of problems okay or this is kind of assorting the problems in a particular fashion step mm -hmm. two collate the set of solutions that have worked the most as against those problems okay if you are a coach and if you are looking at a large number of your clientele who's, who's not finding success in their professional careers and majorly their mid-managers, that is your key set to focus on. Okay, No, no success in professional career, mid-managers, age group, 30 to 40 years. Now, if you've identified this target audience, try now finding solutions that have been successful for this sort of audience. Once you manage to do that, you should come up with a set of success stories based these solutions. And then you evangelize these success stories to the entire world who's out there looking for your services. Okay. Okay. Because... Sorry, sir. So basically, so you are telling uh, to uh, like set a more precise target audience in this case? Not just that. You have to set a much more targeted solution oriented approach also okay one is your target audience which feels a certain set of problems which are repetitive in nature okay second you have to also identify people who've been rather cured for or you know have found success in your solutions and they come up with the same they come with the same set of problems once you've got the first and the second bucket right third is to then spray and pray and distribute the solutions that have been successful to the entire external workforce and the audience also. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. I don't know if that perfectly answers, but I did try making an attempt. Thank you, sir.
Sure. The third bit here, uh, which is largely, uh, you know, to each his own, but it's very imperative and this is much more a nature and nuance of a conversation. When you have a customer reaching out to you or when you have a prospect reaching out to you, post your first conversation. Please make sure you are in some way or the other profusely thankful to that person. Okay. Because that's going to make them feel really special. Okay. You've done your pitch, you've gone and proposed your product and the customer has said, we'll reach out back to you. Okay. And now you are, you're praying night and day, whether this set of prospects will reach out back to me or is it effort down the trail? Okay. But when they do make sure that you receive that outreach with utmost gratitude, because that's what is going to make them very, make them feel really special. You know, something as simple as, uh, Something that really worked for me in, in my early days was the fact that when I would have a prospect reaching out to me the second time or the third time is when I would pick up the phone and, you know, this is this is a rather snarky nuance, but it does help to tell them, you know, I was just putting in place a list of uh, my uh, good meetings that I've had for in the last one month. And uh, while I was going through the list, I was hoping that you would call me and you did. And it seems like deja vu to me. And I'm so happy that, uh, you know, you've given me a call. Some very simple extensions like these go a long way in terms of making the prospect feel really nice about you and uh, about your organization. One of the key things, some of you may be, uh, you know, uh, prospective sales folks here. Some of you may be running your own uh, businesses or running your own set of solutions here, it's very important to know that you are a representative. And when you are a representative of a particular solution, of a particular product, of a particular company, of a particular industry, you, you come with some set of responsibilities. And these responsibilities need to be, uh, need to be fulfilled by virtue of your demeanor and the way you make the other person feel via your conversation. So that's, that's very key and that's very important. Next point that comes to my mind is a personal dissonance and a disconnect that I have with largely the B2C industry in the country. Uh, and I can go on and on about that experience uh, very extensively. But in India, we've seen the B2C ecosystem being very transactional in nature. Okay, And then again, it depends on you know the kind of customer you are and the kind of salesperson you are and the kind of company or product you're representing as well. And I'll explain this with a few examples. Okay, uh, When I'm out there to, I don't know, opt for a credit card or a debit card, or when I'm out there opting for an internet connection or a telephone connection, I uh, the impact value is fairly lower. Okay, It's going to cost me a few hundred bucks or a few thousand bucks to get that service or get that product. And for me personally, the impact value is not going to be so very high. And because we are a country of too many people and uh, we are a country of too many salespeople as well, standardization of a very good uh, sales experience is very, very difficult. Uh, it has to come by, by one's own volition. It has to come by, by one's own effort. I, I always maintain that the reason I may be a good sales guy is because I'm a very difficult customer. Okay. And uh, that's that's largely coming from the experiences I don't get. Uh, and I'll now come to a very different set of examples. When I'm out there purchasing a property or when I'm out there purchasing a very high value car as well uh, or a vehicle, I, I see that we are as a country, as an ecosystem, not yet there in terms of a good sales experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I am sitting across my prospects and customers selling softwares, I go back to that experience. And I think, do I want to give the similar experience to my prospect? At one place, I was wanting to spend money, but because of a very poor sales experience that someone else extended towards me and I ended up didn't ma not making that decision. Okay. Uh, when I have someone who's a fairly senior person in the industry who's who's willing to risk half a million dollars, million dollars, 300, 400,000 uh, dollars of his company's money on me and on my product. Do I want to give him a sales experience or not? Or do I want to give him a good trustworthy sales experience or not? If that is the question you ask yourself, 
I think you've hit gold. Okay. And in the normal parlance, this is called empathy. If you feel for your customer, if you feel for uh, the set of responsibilities that your prospect or customer also undertakes when he is opting for your service, okay, you are able to empathize with him and then consequently move towards building a much more stronger relationship with your prospect and the customer as well. Lastly, a few key elements on this. See, when uh, I, I hope for all of you that you know you you move forward towards selling and representing better products and better services into the future. But when you are in the enterprise ecosystem, okay, you are going to come across a very large community and fraternity of people who don't know what they are doing, and they are in their positions. They are in very senior positions of decision making as well. Okay, and there is where they will come with their own set of biases. Okay. Uh, they'll be like, Humne pehle aisa software liya tha, pehle aisa product liya tha. we opted for coaching services that didn't help out. I don't know what is it that you are going to come uh, up with differently. Okay. My suggestion to you is let the customer stay with their biases. Okay. Do not try to defend by saying, look at the quality that we will uh, extend. Okay. Let them stay with their biases, but continue to build a steady chain of communication with them so that they eventually give you an opportunity to demonstrate. Okay. This might vary from industry to industry. And I can speak for, of course, the segment and the industry that I have largely represented over the years, but I want to keep it very generic because you know then it might confuse uh, the larger audience here as well. So very key point, let the customer stay with their biases, but continue to maintain a steady flow of communication because eventually the biases are going to be dissolved. And when that happens, you are going to be the first point of recollection for the customers. And at that point of time, you do not have to, uh, and this is my earnest request, salespeople definitely start getting overconfident that you know what, the customer has come back to us, Ab jayega? but that's not true. That's definitely not true. So you should continue to be as courteous. You should continue to uh, continue to work towards building that relationship and trust with that very prospect and then move on to starting from zero again and helping the customer navigate through the entire sales process. This time, they are going to operate from a point of high belief. Every Anything that you go and pitch to a prospect largely in the Indian corporate ecosystem, they are always operating from a point of low belief okay? because they have always had experiences and this is across the industry. They've Some or the other person has had experiences which have never been uh, up to the mark. We are a country of complaints and we will always find uh, you know, some nook or cranny to complain about this. Well. But if you let that not undermine you or let that not demotivate you, and you focus towards what you set out to do, there is no reason that why you won't be successful with regards to uh, you know, this approach. So a few key things to summarize on this, treat your customers as human, do not get intimidated by them. Your first set of conversations or your first set of conversation has to be quality. Your research becomes very important there and make sure that the conversation is sharp enough, is important enough, is... Uh, is sensitive enough that they remember you. When they remember you, express gratitude, express acknowledgement, and express appreciation. Very important, please don't be transactional in your approach irrespective of the product that you are selling. Okay, You should go back to the times when perhaps a large part of our uh, ecosystem, our parents had a certain set of representatives for a certain set of services that a household would need. Okay. You'll always have one standard set of, uh, uh, you know, bank managers to go to. You'll always have one standard set of civil service providers to go to. Also, that was because there was stronger relationship building happening at that point of time. Okay. Lastly, allow your customers to make mistakes. Allow your customers to stay with biases, but continue a steady flow of communication because once their biases get dissolved, they'll definitely come back to you, and you start with the entire process again. Uh, we can move to the next slide. Thank you, Sanjay. Now, the right way to do transactions. Hello. Okay. Hello. 
Sure, is there a question? Yeah, hi, hi. Uh, yes, Sanjay, Sanjay Kumar is speaking. Sir, am I audible? There are a couple of Hello? you speaking. Yes, Sanjay, you are audible. Yeah. Sir, actually, I want how to make a good team, teamwork. With team building, sir, can you focus on a little bit idea about the team building? Sure, sure. I'll share yeah. what... Uh, you know what has been my experience about team building uh, the one thing that i will largely also uh, 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 submit is that team building is never a process that will end someday okay team building is always going to be evolutionary in nature you will always find people who are going to be well suited to your world to your ecosystem and then they are going to change as well and then when they do perhaps it's time for them to go or perhaps it's time for you to build an extension of the team. But a few key things that have really helped me in building a team that stays and delivers. First is I have to earmark a set of qualities and a set of values that work for my organization. Okay. Or for if, if it's my own business that I'm running, I know there are going to be some set of values that my organization, my business is going to stick by. For example, we will uh, we will never overcome it and under deliver. We will always be authentic. Uh, larger organizations have policies around not bribing customers or giving out under the table gifts so as to draw uh, business as well. So the first thing that I will do is list down the set of values that really help uh, or are a part of my world. Okay. Then when, when I'm out there interviewing the larger ecosystem, uh, interviewing prospects, I'm going to have a checklist that maps candidate to these set of values. One cheat code that can help you shortcut this process is if you have a team that has stayed with you for a while and delivered, leverage the power of reference. Okay. The, the product that I represent has a very strong underlying layer of employee reference, but it, uh, and people don't understand that. Uh, if you leverage your existing workforce to get you a very similar uh, set of workforce who've, uh, you know, come with the same set of culture, values, geographical nuance, very simple example, if you're hiring in Delhi, you will want your Delhi workforce to get you more people in Delhi to work for you. If you are a bank who's opened up a branch in, uh, I don't know, some remote location in Shilchar or Moga, you will want your existing workforce there to get you more people. So leverage the power of referrals and employer reference to find alignment internally and start building this team. Your question was specifically with regards to building a team. This is how you get people with similar thought processes, similar cultures and values to come at one place. Okay. Then the second very key element is, uh, and this is very hard as business owners or as leaders. And I can, I can guarantee that perhaps 1% people in the country actually are able to follow it very diligently is the art of delegation okay. and the art of extending enough belief in your team members that they can do it by themselves and you do not have to, you know, get down and dirty with everything uh, that involves their or your attention. Okay. So very quick in the interest of time, I'll give you these few, two quick suggestions. One, identify a list of cultures and values that resonate with your world. And secondly, then work towards adherence to this. Thirdly, focus towards delegation focus towards empowering your team rather than doing everything by yourself these three key things will help you uh, get the right team in order sir uh, one more query having uh, sure. as my own past experience suppose sir uh, my thought and my colleague's thought who is reporting to me is not matching okay and always he behaving like a reluctant uh, uh, colleague then how I'm going to manage that type of colleagues? Right. We've all you know, had these set of difficult colleagues that we are responsible for. Uh, you know, the key always will be, again, I can very strongly uh, endorse the fact that perhaps only 1% of people in the country know how to have an honest conversation also, a very unbiased conversation. 
if you can manage to do that and you know uh, have your colleagues sit across the table and have an honest conversation with him and ask them you know rather than making a suggestion we are uh, like i am doing here a lot of people in india want to be coaches and you know want to give suggestions but when you ask suggestions is then you actually put the put, uh, put the ball in the other person's court and ask them how do we solve for this problem i know you have a problem uh, working with me how do we solve for this problem and it's going to be very straightforward either the person will say i don't want to work with you in which case there are steps to be taken or the person will extend warmth and say i want to work with you but if you can help me solve 1 2 3 4 5 maybe it is going to be a better working relationship okay okay but he is a very reluctant whatever i am telling as far as the business is concerned or improve the business is not going to give the a value for that hello am i audible sir yeah 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 i i can hear you uh, can i put the example hello sure go ahead actually we are having the joint field work with him uh, i am actually in pharma and danon india so just i have sold the so our product with the ipad to the customer but he is deny ki this happened that happened uh, what i have suggested if you so with the ipad means audio visual coordination will be there and which will much better to recall the uh, recall our brand and we'll get the advantage uh, to improve our uh, business but he is not at all uh, interested and somehow means he is not doing from his own and by pressurizing him uh, he is doing all these things sir see if you are responsible not... for the revenue of this person and this person is reporting to you uh, yeah, yeah. it's it's fairly straight forward you will gauge this person's success on uh, the revenue that they bring in okay now you have given him the steps to follow if that person or your colleague is not following those steps and eventually not driving revenue you know what decision you have to take if uh, or maybe you know show parallels that the other colleagues are leveraging this activity using an ipad and they are able to successfully drive revenue if that helps so be it if not then eventually the revenues will speak for itself performance will speak for itself and then you can make a decision on this colleague also oh, oh thank you sir thank you sure. for doing the insight and definitely i am going to uh implement the same and good luck let the, me know how that works out yeah yeah definitely definitely i will share my feedback and my experience also sir sure. thanks a lot hello sanjay i don't know where uh, who this question is from can you help me yeah uh, kaf is sir yes kaf uh, so i mean basically uh, you know but as you mentioned there is a bias right that if a client has already a bias that i don't want to try this product i have already tried and i didn't like it so how uh, like how we deal with uh, with this kind of thing in a call if i'm calling someone and after listening about the product only just the name or just the kind of product he says okay i i know how this products work and i don't like it so how do we you know uh, handle this kind of objection there are a couple of things that one needs to keep in mind okay uh when it comes to relationship building also it's not just the one relationship that you are going to build as a sales professional or as someone who is representing a product so uh, one of the things that i always tell my team is that if 50 people are not going to pick up your phone there are another 500 people who will be out there to respond to you okay and who will be out there to help you build the relationships that you are wanting to build okay. uh with that being said it's also very key to understand that this this person is going to live with his biases you'll have to start finding alternate people within that organization uh, to maybe try developing a bond and maybe share content to say i understand these are the problems and these are the problems that a lot of these people also have faced but some of my customers have seen success now and uh, share like i said sharing stories will definitely help sharing success stories will definitely help try for uh, Uh, solving the problem that you are explaining 
one uh, a few key things that have helped me over the course of uh, my sales career okay uh, sales is largely about traveling and uh, personally i enjoy traveling a lot uh, whether it is within one zone periphery or uh, you know largely to wherever the customers are also uh, make sure that you make this travel worthwhile and the only way you are able to do that is uh, is you are if, is if you are making use of good use of technology some tools out there that help you track where your customers are in the funnel and you know pick up the phone whenever you are in your cabs uh, pick up the phone have a word with them if they are already existing customers just pick up the phone and ask them kaisa chal raha hai are you getting the right kind of support that the customer success team or the support team is extending or not okay look for reference look for customer reference look for references they are the ones a, a happy customer is the one who is going to be your your strongest fastest lead okay so make use of travel well pick up the phone have conversations uh do not have conversations in the want for more business but have conversations to show that you care okay uh like i said make it a routine okay something as simple that i would do is you know or even i do this now when i'm traveling either when uh, even if i'm driving i make it a point that i'm looking through my contact list and having conversations it just makes the travel much more worthwhile and it makes sure that i have ticked these action items off my list okay uh i i it it's not easier for me to do this now but previously i would make sure that i am meeting my prospects uh, sorry existing customers at least once in a month prospects is a very different story altogether prospects most of the time they are calling them to follow up maine proposal bheja tha kya hua right or have you had a chance to discuss this internally that will always continue to happen but the more stronger bond you are able to establish with your existing customers also the ones who have entrusted belief in you and paid money to you and bought your product uh, the more easier it is going to be to build relationships into the future also so that's going to be very key okay point number 4 yes implementation of everything which is point number 1 2 and 3 and rinse and repeat remember one thing you know some phrases that you can live through by life in life which will not only help you in sales but will it will help you when you are running your own organization also is the fact that you have to build a repeatable scalable uh-huh. engine a set of activities that have worked for you if you do that enough number of times it's like exercise if you do it enough number of times it's going to give you success so in the similar way rinse and repeat build a repeatable scalable engine and one of the strong aspects that i have always lived through in my life is that i was selling a job portal in the past then i went on to sell payroll solutions now i'm selling an enterprise software if tomorrow i go back to the same customer who's perhaps now in in want for i don't know an fmcg product or even a soap for that matter they are going to not buy the soap because i am selling a soap or because they want a soap they are going to buy the soap because i am selling it so if you live by this mantra i think there is no reason that you know you're not going to drive success in sales and that's when your relationship building has actually succeeded it's not that you will go and sell the customer something that they don't need but when they are in need and when you are part of an ecosystem which is selling that product or that service it is going to be your strongest validation uh, as as an individual as a sales professional that because i am here uh, this organization or this prospect has come to me and buying my product it's going to give you a very different high and believe me i've been there i continue to be there uh, be in such situations many 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 times and it's a good feeling it's a really good feeling let's move to the next slide hello hello sir sanjay speaking sir really this is very interesting and uh, what i feel if this is really work so can you repeat once again hello for that what do you want me to repeat sanjay uh, sir uh, you have told no ki customer should uh, rely on me and due to me uh, he must be recommend or he must buy the product correct not for the organization value you this said it yourself you said it yourself no 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 so you you sir once again that entire uh, and phrase also sir uh, i am unable to understand your phrase what you have told that is very old one so once again you repeat sir really this is very uh, helpful and 
I am also um, in the sales industry from last two decades. So what I also feel the same situation. So really it is matching my wavelength and your uh, wavelength. So more or less, sir, just once you repeat and make me understand very uh, in easy language, sir. I'll try to uh, make it simple for you, Sanjay. What what I did mention uh, yeah. is that your relationships with your prospects and your customers have to be so strong that irrespective of what you've sold to them in the past and what you continue to sell now, they will come and buy the product not because they want the product or uh, because they are in need of one, but because you are selling that product or service. So it's important that they rely more on your representation than the company. Okay. I've had plenty of times when my prospects have come to me and told me that you know what, I don't care what kind of, comp what your company's credentials are. I don't want to have a conversation with your founder or whoever you report to. I am relying on you and making this purchase. That kind of is a very strong validation of uh, the success of your relationships with your customers. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely I am going to implement and uh, my opinion is also very same. Okay, relations means due to me, uh, my customer is purchasing goods or uh, recommending uh, my brand. So really, my my thinking is also same, sir. So once again, thanks a lot and validate from that expertise. So once again, thanks a lot. Good luck. So good luck. Thank you. Should we go to the next slide, Sanjay? A few quick. Uh, Cheat codes, if I may call it that, something that has helped me in the enterprise ecosystem. And uh, Kev, to your point, uh, you know, when customers come with their own biases, sometimes this can help, which is point number one. Okay, which is agree with the customer. Yes, there are problems. There are problems with the product. There are problems with the fraternity. But if you do some kind of anti-selling to showcase, uh, and sometimes maybe just call out questions to say. Is there someone else who can help you with this? Is there someone else who can help solve for this problem? If not, then maybe mine is the product that you need to go ahead with to start with. Okay. That kind of anti-selling really helps. And irrespective of whatever bias or status quo that the customer comes up with, sometimes it just helps to uh, tell them that they, the world has found success with me. There is no reason that you will not be able to find success with my product or my service. So uh, that can help. That's a very quick cheat code. Uh, another one is always in, in the people who are send, selling to larger enterprises, people who are selling high value deals, it helps to go top to bottom because uh, that is the approach that largely works. The decision maker, if he is the first person you reach out to, that's going to help you close the deal much more faster or at least give you clarity. One of the things that I always tell my team is that I don't want a CRM which has a lot of leads. I want a CRM which has minimum number of relevant leads who are moving across different stages in the funnel and eventually to closure. Because this is a learning that I have also kind of achieved over life is the lesser number of decisions uh, you make, the more successful you are. And you have to reach to a point wherein you don't have to look through 100, 150 accounts in your funnel. You have to reach to a point wherein most of the accounts are either outside your funnel, out of the funnel, not relevant, or into the funnel and moving towards closure. That kind of decision making will require a lot of effort, will require a lot of research. But if you get to that, it's going to make life much more easier. Okay. Treat every relationship differently. Relationships are not one size fits all. It's very important that you treat them differently. Uh, treat them, if there are middle level managers you'll speak to, there are top level managers you'll speak to. Sometimes you'll speak to really frontline folks who are on the customer's end. And they might speak to you in a way that you may not even enjoy. But you have to continue to be cordial and make sure that somehow or the other you establish that distance while also ensuring that you have their back across the hierarchy of the org. That's going to be very key. Uh, something that I live by, be cordial to leaders, friendly to middle managers, because they are the ones who will be able to move around things. They are the executioners. 
they are the ones who will want to feel good about themselves in terms of making decisions so be closer to them go have smokes with them go have drinks with them go have a lot of family conversations with them make them feel like you are part of the same boat that they are also sailing in because they are the ones who will be able to convince their leadership they are the ones who will keep their subordinates in line should there be any detractors in your prospects also okay try to make the conversations much more informal also sometimes if uh, that ha- helps find common interest uh, find common situations that uh, you are in you know when when you are talking to someone you will understand whether they are of the same age group same stage group uh, similar similar life experiences and perhaps establish conversations around those life experiences you may have a prospect who enjoys travel as much as you do can you share travel experiences can you take advice can you give advice everything is going to give you an output or a learning so look at that from a conversation angle and not from an outcome angle all the time and a very key cheat code that helps you build much more faith and belief within the prospect is do not try to make your product or yourself the champion in their world try to make them the champion in their world because if you do that no matter where they go they are going to take you along that's something that's very very key i know we are at the end of time sanjay i want to check with you do we have more time uh if not then we can no well, let's i think uh, let's, let's return uh, back time continue, and then probably spend some time if there are any question and answers so if i heard you correctly you want me to continue with the rest of the presentation let's continue with the deck right all right let's go to the next slide uh since i am showcasing this to people who are part of a sales school i thought i'll bring some methodology also so lage ke educated conversation ho raha hai so i kind of built together a framework uh this framework is something that is an implementation framework this framework that is is something that's also a relationship framework okay uh and it has largely any relationship has largely five stages in which you can achieve success one is you discover the set of people the set of prospects you want to develop a relationship with develop a bond largely with then you focus on designing a strategy around this like i said no one size fits all so you'll have to put together put a pen and paper together and design a strategy around what is going to be your way forward with each prospect each account in terms of building a relationship and then find standardizations around it also okay you don't need to write a separate story for everybody but if you know there are going to be there are five customers who are facing problems i don't know let's say with their recruiting okay and all five of them belong to the same industry what is the kind of solution or a standard communication channel then you can a standard communication content that you can put together so that there is impact across five together okay put that in design put that to build which largely means execute monitor impact and outcome also okay a lot of us who are in prospecting who are sdrs who are uh, you know just responsible for outreach we are spraying and praying emails by the day and making phone calls by the day without seeing or testing the impact if i have made 100 calls in a day and i have managed to only have 30 conversations and only one meeting is it a content issue is it my database issue is it is uh, am i the issue or the people that i'm reaching out to is the issue which is largely the database issue so find that out clean your processes better and then follow the steps again from discover design bit so it's important to test out every effort that you are making and make sure that this kind of reaches back to phase 1 for you or step 1 for you and then of course finally deployment is when the successful deployment of your efforts and activities actually help you see the results and that's when you know that you've closed the deal you've continued to make a stronger relationship and then it enables you to move forward also so largely if you focus on these five phases for every transaction every conversation every relationship every prospect uh it's going to help you standardize your efforts extensively as well 
and what you see below that is largely in terms of the stakeholders that you need to manage or the key aspects that you need to manage you have to discover the right set of businesses you want to sell to you have to discover the right set of stakeholders you have to sell to discover the right set of deliverables and then one of the one of the very important things that in the past one of the leaders that i was working for told me in sales it does not matter what you get me by the end of the month it matters what you get me as of yesterday or today so that's very important timelines are important for your internal stakeholders as well as your external stakeholders whenever you are promising delivery promise delivery to your customers also and then work backwards to live towards that delivery also even if it is sending a deck even if it is sending success stories even if it is sending customer testimonials make sure you live by the uh, commitments that you've made okay. and all of this together will require one keyword that is very famous these days in mba colleges it's been famous for the last 5 7 years which is self reengineering but this is not just important for relationship building this is largely important for life as well you'll have to look within to see whether do you possess the skill sets to first realize there are problems in the way you are approaching your work and then work backwards to self reengineer yourself uh move to the next slide this is a this is a much more sophisticated word for customer success this is a much more sophisticated word for uh, relationship building also and a few key elements that actually help you put down steps in order okay hyper care this is nothing but post sales care which is important for uh, people who again trusted you with their money trusted you with their responsibilities you have to understand if you are selling a 1 crore 2 crore 3 crore software or a product or a service people have put their jobs on the line because they have opted for your product or service So you have to make sure that you will ensure continuous hyper care, continuous customer success from there. Try being a single point of contact for people at least who, for at least the ones who've made a decision in your favor. Make sure that their subordinates also find success with the product and the program, because nobody is permanent at their positions ever. Okay, if you rely on just one person in your client company that he is going to be the whole and soul for you. and not look towards the branches and the tributaries that flow through him or her then you are preparing yourself for future failure so make sure that you touch base with every key stakeholder that ties up to your main stakeholder plan for interventions i don't know what process your company would follow or what process you follow in terms of post sales but make sure that you plan at least your own interventions so whenever i am closing a deal or my team members are closing a deal i tell them that this is not where your job ends you you signed the contract have the finance team send the invoice but now i want a plan of engagement that you will also do there will be a separate team who will do it but i want you to also put in place a plan of engagement with the customer that's going to be very important monitor train of course see how success is being delivered talk to folks internally care for your customer and the care for your customer will always come in when you have internally also aligned things it's not easy it's very difficult okay even while being head of sales for my own organization i have to fight battles for my customer uh, all the time but it's it's worth it because you no more nobody more than you is going to feel closer to the customer you are their first point of contact you should always continue to be their last point of contact also and then of course there are nuances around making sure like i said put a plan of engagement be part of the monthly business reviews be part of the quarterly business reviews identify bottlenecks in the current del delivery or service or in the current adoption and then continue to solve for it internally and externally both and of course look for more opportunities a customer can continue to be an ever giving source of revenue for you if you play your cards right and your cards can be played right when you are focusing on hyper care let's move to the next slide a few stories that i thought i'll share and i wanted to kind of get you know uh the content 
uh, before this out of the way uh, when i was working uh, you know with iim jobs uh, we come up with a very separate product offering altogether also and i was in touch with india's fourth largest private bank at that point of time and uh, the deal had fell through i i was in touch with the authority who would make the decision on this but the deal fell through but the one thing that i continue to do is drop in a note drop in a message drop in an email once every month okay and uh, i remember it was around october maybe around the time of diwali i sent out a, you know seasons greetings note out to the leader to the stakeholder there along with a simple note saying you know if if this is not the right time for me do let me know we will connect when the time is right it's been 6 years now uh, i had the deal in the next very month and uh, that kind of also gave me enough confidence that the steps that i am uh, investing in terms of maintaining some sort of standardized regular communication really helps because you never know the customer might not think of you at all times okay someone else might have come in proposed another solution internally and they might not think of you they can only think of you when they hear from you and you can only build relationships when you are having conversations continuously with someone so it all ties back to your efforts of outreach okay similar was the story with you know the largest reinsurance service provider in the world okay they are they are now a uh, trillion dollar organization and then for that organization even though the time was not right in terms of their budgets to invest i would make a visit uh, after of course checking in for time putting in calendar invites but go visit them uh, once a month and kind of understand how are they solving for the other problems in their ecosystem got nothing to do with something that i was selling them and six visits for the next six months help me get uh, help me bag one of the largest deals of my lifetime with that organization and i still uh, this was back in 2016 i still have that note from one of the stakeholders recognizing me for being uh, you know for staying in touch for a very long time uh, irrespective of the outcome and that kind of you know helps you where you are okay uh, back in 2020 when we were all fighting uh, a global calamity fighting a pandemic that was when i had the opportunity to back my first million dollar deal and when that happened it was the number 3 private sector bank in the country i am now their default recruiting system uh that could only happen because of 8 uh, months long of continuous relationship building about 25 demos with different stakeholders supporting infosec teams supporting finance teams supporting procurement teams supporting business stakeholders so managing all these threads this this is a nuance that uh, you come across more in enterprise deals but to have the wherewithal to have the patience and to stick by these conversations for such a long time uh, the fruit that you bear is uh, a million dollar deal okay and this is a very very key uh, last one is a very key example uh, my first very big deal uh, when i started out my career was in jan of 2016 and that very organization uh, helped me get into the thick of things in terms of spreading my wings as as a sales professional because that's when i first tasted success and when i first tasted success the relationships were so strong enough that in 2019 when i had already left the company that you know they were engaged with and uh, moved on to my second uh, or third role as well my current founder reached out to him because they were also customers asking them you know koi hai kya sales mein head karne ke liye to batana and you know out of the blue that gentleman recommended me i was not even largely in touch with that person but he recommended me i was working somewhere else i was not looking for a job but then the conversations happened and now i am here so i can only attribute it to the experience that a certain individual or a certain leader will get with you when you are engaged with them they will trust you enough to recommend you and kind of put their name and reputation at stake also because when you are referring or recommending someone a lot is on the line but it was important for me to share these quick anecdotes and stories in the interest of time i've kind of made it very crisp 
but i wanted to share this with you because i'm sure you've had similar experiences and uh, perhaps better than the ones that i have just uh, called out so or if not work towards mm -hmm. you know getting these similar experiences so with that being said i think i will uh, call it a day uh, work towards driving revenue through relationships is my last note of the do we uh, do we have time to open this up for questions sanjay yeah sir yes yeah you have and how long do you want to keep this for uh, just so i know so we will just take couple of questions if there are any i think there somebody already asking one yeah yeah one minute sir one minute sir job told me you make the response i'm sorry i'm not able to hear you clearly sanjay if you can yeah yeah, yeah sir now now yeah now, this, now is better. this is better yeah thank you thank you sir sir what i am telling just now you have told you make a relation in such a way so that you can left or your colleague will left customer will remember you then sir how it's possible to suppose one geography someone is working from last one decade and suddenly he lost uh, he left the job and again how to maintain that then what is the tips essentially you have to check back with the colleague who's left what has worked for that customer okay and then go back and reassure the customer of a similar level of relationship and service delivery okay and uh, if not keep your funnel always heavy so that if in case you risk losing that customer you always have others to support you for that lost revenue hi uh, okay hi i have one question can i sure with him go ahead yeah hi sir um now as you correctly mentioned sir the clients buy not only because of the liking but because they trust you and especially when there is a selling of suppose high equipment so what i am referring is about lakhs lakhs of rupees like 9 lakhs 10 lakhs 50 lakhs right so it's about the trust and trust will come only because if there is a very good relationship am i right 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 now now suppose if uh, my predecessors my seniors or so the one who was in that particular territory uh, with that client uh there was some uh, uh relationship which got hampered okay so if you could give some some clarity or idea how can we rebuild this trust because one is because this has affect the company because of that one person see there are a couple of things that one can do that, yeah uh you have to know what matters more to this customer who's lost trust in you and who are uh, i don't know his immediate subordinates so very his... big customer very absolutely customer. very influential yeah. correct so what i'm saying is you have to understand what matters to that customer to that uh, prospect uh if you cannot establish direct relationships with that person you have to try establishing relationships either with their superiors or with their subordinates and try to get in roads into the organization again okay and if you get an opportunity to have a one in one on one with uh, that very person who's for some reason now resenting your organization resenting your product take a leader from your organization who's at the highest authority and showcase reassurance by having that leader coming and sitting across because that is going to help see if that customer is very important it's going to matter to your leader also okay so you will have to get internally uh, get that internal support also and tell them that i need you to come with me because this customer has you know harbored some negative emotions about our organization and i need this to be corrected and the only way it will be is when someone of your stature can also come in so these are if you can't move mountains get people to move mountains for you that's going to become very important okay yeah thank thanks a lot Oh, uh, good evening, Sunny. Hi, good evening. Uh, I have one question. As you mentioned, even if customer have biases, and you are not making any sales transaction with him, try to maintain a relationship with him by being in contact. So, what strategy you used or will suggest to maintain their relationship, or how we can be in their contact? Because you know, when we make us 
sell, then it is easy to be in contact. But when no transaction happening, then it's become quite difficult to be in their contact. Uh, not really. So just see, my I kind of think that this differently. See, biases are of largely two kinds. One is situational bias, and the other is self bias. Okay. Let's say uh, my my prospect who's perhaps I don't know a head HR in one particular company. Now that company is very conservative and they never spent in HR technology or in progressive technologies. Now, if that is the situation, the person will have the bias. Kitna bhi acha product ho, hume approval nahi milega, and I will not get the budgets to go ahead and uh, purchase this software. This is a situational bias. But I have to be in touch with the customer because I know this prospect is progressive enough that when he moves to the other organization or to any other organization, he is definitely going to think of me. So that is why a steady stream of communication is important when you want to solve for situational bias. Now, when there is self bias, wherein let's say this prospect has used your software in the past and it has not worked out well in another company altogether, or your product in the past and it's not worked out for that person in the past. uh then something i suggested to nitin good help kind of incorporate or bring in an evangelist or a leader make them talk to other customers this is something i don't know if you know the kind of products that all of you represent or sell or wish to sell uh is this one step part of your sales process but largely when it comes to enterprise sales customers want to talk prospects want to talk to customers and that is very key make them don't let them see testimonials only on linkedin share talk to your customer tell them you know i am i am negotiating another deal there is a prospect who is being very hard if uh, is it okay if they can pick up the phone call you and you can share your good experiences that is going to help uh, solve for or clear out a lot of cloud for this difficult prospect also does that help you jasin You're speaking. You're on mute. I think Udaya Kumar also has a question, Sunny. Uh, please I answer think... the question, but I can't find the question on the chat box. Yeah, uh, Udaya, do you have a question? Yeah, 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 yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, sir, actually, um, I have a experience with a customer. uh i worked with a company when i was a service representative uh where i uh, used to provide a service for an elevator mm -hmm. actually uh, uh it's it's a elevator so i was a service engineer so that customer is new for me when it is uh, handed over to me so when i take over there was a frequent problems with the elevator so customer got furious so always when he see me so he get uh, annoyed on something it was problem it was not not a problem with me it was a problem with the product so customer escalated the issue to my manager and the branch manager so and he mentioned that the service was better with that existing engineer so he mentioned his name so after that i was not able to build any rapport with him so because he, every time i used to meet him so he, he used to avoid me so even the service getting better so how can we deal those kind of customers this is a very uh, precarious situation and specifically with regards to the uh, industry and the example that you gave uh, i think the conversations are rather much more informal in nature than you know adopting to a formal means of communication like emails where maybe you can drop a note uh, to apologize for the current problems with the product and also tell them that you know we are taking the right steps to uh, cure your resentment but in this situation i think the way forward very simply would be there to get the facts right and if your manager and your reporting manager they know that you are not to Uh, blame for this take them along and get reintroduced to the customer largely in these situations problems arise when there is not a proper handover that is happening by the existing or exiting relationship manager 
and being given to the new client service manager or relationship manager so if that handover has not happened properly which is which is a very uh, prevailing problem in our country get your reporting manager along uh, with you have a word with the customer and kind of uh, put things out in the open that sir i sense that uh, you know faults with the product are being attributed to me but that's really not the case we are trying to solve your problem and i'm there for you uh, i hope that we'll have a much more smoother chain of communication in the future yes sir actually actually it is a better insight i think because sir in in that company there is no culture like this if there is a person leaves from the company no one informs the customer so he gets shocked where is the existing person that is a larger friction you know the fault is not with you or the customer is actually not blaming you but mm-hmm. largely for the company for this so he can't able to digest that sudden surprise because the person who providing a That's good true. service so he felt that the if new person comes na it may create some problems he will not give a good service that kind of biases they might have in the mind but that's it's human nature to you know find discomfort with anybody new also mm. so you will have to give this time okay okay thank you sir thank you so much uh they were not you have a question or mark fernandez also has a question yes, so actually i put my question a few minutes back in the chat box so can you read it out the borna yes sir so sir basically i have two question as long as i am from coaching industry so the first thing is how to build a good relationship and trust with your professional network even if there are no more verbal or professional transaction with them them okay that's one which is the other and the second one is is it okay start providing service when you are limited when you have limited amount of testimony to show or less amount of infrastructure is that okay to start where the whole system is under construction like if uh, 50% work is done and 50% is on process so uh can i start providing services at that point of time also i will answer the second question first the answer is a very big resounding yes uh you should so i'm sure mark cuban is a name that's synonymous with all of you he is one of the leading billionaires of the world and uh, uh, he you know he professes that perfection is the killer of profitability so if you are always going to wait for uh, you know so you should never wait for all the signals to go green and then start driving uh, in the similar fashion you should never wait uh, for all the pieces to be in order uh, for you to start uh, putting out a business so you should start with whatever minimum you have which is it in in the in in the uh, in sophisticated parlance it's called mvp which is minimum viable product so if you think that with an mvp with a minimum viable product you can go out in the market and start at least proposing your services uh and it's going to get you some visibility it's going to help you create the right kind of noise you should go ahead and do it uh to your first question which is uh if there is no verbal or professional communication how do you still continue to build relationship and trust see uh i am uh, i am no champion on uh, you know leveraging the power of social media but uh, there is enough and more opportunity out there to leverage social selling as a way for you to grab eyeballs okay uh, the important thing is you have to and social selling is not relationship selling these are two different things we should of course establish that but what is important is going to be to get your right kind of communication uh, to get to target the right kind of audience and also level, even if you have minimum testimonials spray and pray the market as much with those testimonials so that some or the other lead gets generated okay and do not just rely on testimonials from customers ask them to talk to their network in your industry uh, you know problems are all pervasive so if you solved or coached a few individuals they will know other set of individuals who face a similar need for coaching or who want a similar need for coaching 
and you can solve for this by asking them can you recommend and refer me to your world that can help you get started all right all right thank you sir thank you very much yes ma'am thank you sir uh, i actually it's a little bit of a what do you say personal question the thing is like you rightly said the, the, the handovers if they are not done properly uh, the person who takes over the account has uh, a difficult uphill uh, to climb so mine is a similar situation where the i did a proper handover of a set of accounts that i've been doing and i'm in key accounts so it's a very limited you have to work with and this is my first sale so i went with the very aggressive uh, way of just pushing 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 and now i have ended up damaging most of my relationships where people don't even pick up my calls any suggestions to uh, rectify my situation one thing is you know when the chips are down uh, regret should be the last of your worries what is important is to uh, pull out an additional set of prospects leads and start a fresh approach second is if the people that in the you, same firm you are saying sir no i am talking this is an altogether different set of sample size that you should create for yourself a different okay. prospective portfolio that you should create for yourself so okay. that at least you have a head start like okay. This but when it is key accounts, usually you work within a limited universe, right? That's I'm sure. Exactly. I'm sure. So, uh, if I had to extrapolate your situation where you are largely dealing with existing customers, and uh, or you know prospective customers which are uh, assigned only to you because they hold a certain revenue or size in nature, and you are responsible for these set of accounts. So, if you've done that. Uh, my suggestion is one build try building out have a word internally see if you can uh, pick up or uh, you know add to your existing portfolio uh, because there are never enough companies out there so you will always find a company who will find alignment to the product or the service you are selling and you will manage to sell that that is always going to be the case uh, unless you are geographically limited or whatever etc the second is how do you rectify existing hampered relationships they get rectified see people's memories are also fairly limited in terms of uh, you know their dissonance dissonance rejection dejection is largely situational situational in nature so mm -hmm. start a fresh thread you know something mm -hmm. as very simple as a transactional activity to start a fresh thread start sending them content success stories that will matter to them matter to their mm -hmm. own world try developing relationships over linkedin try responding to their comments their posts uh, find alignment there try an alternative channel or communication to start a conversation then perhaps they won't even remember that there is a mark fernandez from xyz company who was aggressively following up for something uh, try doing that see if that helps or not if not of course ask for a different portfolio thank you sir thank you that, that that is actually very helpful thank you all right sunny i think that brings us to the end of the session i don't think we have any other questions to take as of now in the chat box or people coming up uh thank you so much for taking out time on a saturday evening sunny to help us with the real life examples that you faced and how you went about it uh to our fellow audience thank you so much for joining guys look forward to connecting with you all uh, next saturday at 6 pm super thank you thank you so much for the questions thank you so much sanjay emadri for the opportunity please convey my regards to tarun also and i enjoyed this thank you thank you so very much and good luck to all of you uh, again really enjoyed the questions and uh, good luck with the situations that all of you are in i'm sure you'll find yourself a way out take care thank you thank you sunny sir it was a very the informative mm -hmm. and enlightening session really enjoyed it yeah. thank you take care thank you thank you guys bye bye